from the desk at Old Mates. You're watching Backyard Tech. It's Sunday morning, and that means... One of the more quieter weeks of late here at Backyard Tech. As always, we'll look at the week in review. We'll look at what's on the cards for the week ahead, middle part of this week's vlog, Roadworks. I'm going to give you my opinion after the chaos and mayhem of trying to get to where I was going last night in Melbourne. All that and whatever else comes to mind, coming up. This is the Backyard Tech Vlog. Hey, how's it going? Thank you for tuning in. It is Sunday. It is Vlog time again as always here at the Backyard Tech channel. And uh, of late... Well, one of the more quieter weeks I've had here in a while. I'm finding it, especially at this point in time, trying to get out, you know, five or six videos a day and get back up to that 35, 30 to 35 videos a week mark. Slightly tedious. <laughs> I may have to start getting up at like five o'clock in the morning to get the videos out. Holy, imagine that. I'd turn it into a four coffee day. That'd be interesting, wouldn't it? It's just gone up past seven in the morning here, and before we get into the, the rest of this week's vlog. Now, as is tradition with the Sunday vlogs here at Backyard Tech, if you went out last night and decided to double down on your efforts, if not triple down on your efforts on the slops and terps last night, because Friday night's efforts just didn't rid your brain of a tedious week, and so you thought you'd uh, have a... Yeah, reasonable to medium night last night that turns into a rather large night on the Slops and Terps and you're awake at this hour on a Sunday morning. Well, it's not going to make you feel human, but it may make you feel uh, slightly more compass mentis. Coffee time. Oh. Jeez, that's better. <laughs> Even old mate feels like that this morning. We got home late last night, but I'll talk about Melbourne in the middle part of the vlog. First off, though, as always, let's get into the week in review as I go and grab the mouse and shrink myself down. And uh, as you can see, we kicked it off with the weekly wrap-up from last week, opinion on the Oracle employee walkout, Microsoft, and uh, a few other bits and pieces. Obviously, Google shipping all the UK data to the US. Uh, we then started a new series on resurrecting my Acer AT350F2 server and uh, the change of plans until I can get the Dell up and firing shrink myself a little bit more and then we had uh, Sunday's convo we had the TBIM promo we then uh, knocked out uh, part two and three of resurrecting the Acer computer the Acer server I should say it's not a computer it's a server we had Monday's convo we had the Tuesday promo um, there was no ESXi stuff done. Um, we had tech news today and I, I sort of looked at, uh, considering doing, um, the weekly wrap up, but <laughs> net neutrality, the FCC, I mean, you, you're getting into an area where things are going to get ugly and messy in a hurry. Simple as that. We had Tuesday's convo. We had the midweek update. Uh, we then resurrected my Dell T1102 server as both my rear pro TV PC and put Plex back on it. Working like a dream. I've still got to show you that setup yet too. I've got to get to that. Uh, we had Wednesday's Convo. We had the Thursday Promo. Oop. We had the TGIF Promo. We then did parts four and five on the resurrecting of the Acer and uh, redoing the Raid Array and then getting the iSCSI system up and running. We had the disastrous Friday night convo where finally that damn vacuum tube powered SFF decided to spit the dummy majorly. 
Then yesterday was somewhat quiet. Um, that's due in part to other things going on, but we had the weekend primo rebuilding another firewall using a mini computer from the 70s. Some people don't seem to realise yesterday was slightly on the sarcastic Saturday side again. I think some people had it fly over their head. Um, because I'm half the reason I'm doing it, if um, a few people will understand this, but some are probably slightly confused. Um, you guys know I bear a lot of flack for running outdated hardware, right? And, you know, people often say, oh, you can't do that on those old things. It'll never work. Nothing will happen. It'll all foul up. But it shows that if you understand how the hardware works, you can often get things to work. Um... We then had the ASXi update and storage cluster update where I brought you up to speed regarding the fact that the Supermicro 113 is now under the Quantastore system. Really happy with that, I've got to be honest with you. Then we did the product review of A Shampoo Win Optimizer 17 that a good friend gave me, and I wish to thank him again for that publicly. Ivan Dormay, thank you, boyo. Fantastic, guys. It really is an awesome little bit of kit. And since running it, the main PC has been absolutely phenomenal. Really good. So, there we are. The Week in Review. Short, sharp, and... Uh, whoop. I grabbed the wrong... I grabbed the wrong one then, didn't I? There we go. Alrighty. Talk about short shoves. Didn't get out nearly enough this week. I'm actually pretty annoyed with myself, to be honest with you, considering what I normally get out. Hello, the other half's up. Okay, now. Little part of this week's vlog. Um, to go home back to Melbourne yesterday was fantastic. All right, I love Melbourne. I love my hometown. I always will. Now, some people will often say that their hometown is disgusting and they prefer where they live now. Not old, mate. Not old, mate. Yeah, you know, I've got a lot of friends back home in Melbourne, so an opportunity to go up, yes, okay, I understand it costs us a lot of petrol to get up there, but, you know, but that's not what this is about. What this is about and I've sort of brushed over it in the past, but I can't speak for Sydney, Brisbane, Adelaide, Perth, Darwin, Canberra, etc., or other cities. But I can speak about Melbourne. All right. The road works. It is absolutely off the charts in Melbourne. Streets are shut. It's traffic chaos. There's chaos and mayhem and shards of Picasso traffic going everywhere at the moment. Getting anywhere from my old side of Melbourne back this side of Melbourne is like, you know, navigating mine tunnels. All right. Now, the problem is to get to where I had to go yesterday, right, around four or five years ago, would have only taken me around an hour and a half-ish. Hour and 20, hour and a half-ish, all right? Once I get to my old side of Melbourne, I don't need a GPS, all right? I know how to get around a couple of the major roads that side of Melbourne that any time of the day or night can be catastrophically busy, okay? To get to where I was going last night, we left home yesterday, Arvo, just on three o'clock. And I didn't get to where I had to go until 20 past five, two hours, 20 minutes. Now, I understand road works, all right? Sometimes I've got to be done out of necessity. But the road works happening at the moment in Melbourne where they're all happening at the same damn time. 
is causing traffic carnage. Now, okay, the planning of Melbourne back when it was put together planned for a couple of million people. You're talking about a city with over four and a half million in it. Okay. Um, so the road network was never designed for the population size of Melbourne, but no city ever is. I mean, the forward planners in the 40s never knew Melbourne and get to this big. All right. And admittedly, most forward planners are you know, guided by the government and, you know, you only go so far into the future because if it fouls up, it's not on our head, you know, politics is politics. But yesterday, the, 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 the fact that, you know, there's one major freeway called the Westgate Freeway here in Melbourne. Now, Victorians know it. The Westgate. 40 k's an hour. It's an 80k an hour road, and it's 40k's an hour, three lanes. It's now taking longer to get to Melbourne now than what it did 35 years ago when it was a single lane road, you know, one lane up, one lane down between Melbourne and Geelong. It now takes longer to get to Melbourne. And you see, the problem is, once one road work job is fixed on one freeway, they start another one. And all of a sudden, you've got speed limits going down. Melbourne has, from one day to another, you will never in Melbourne get a free run on a road where the posted speed limit, normally, you know, somewhere between 60 and 80 k's on metro roads, and 100 k's on the freeway, except for the Hume and the Calder, where it's 110, um, you will never get a free run to sit at, at the speed limit. You will always be between 20 to 30 k's under that limit because of roadworks. Now, one theory I've had, and a couple of people have, you know, sort of looked at it and said, hey, it's not a bad theory. The amount of car accidents in Melbourne and fender benders in Melbourne is twofold. We've got roadworks, we've got people looking at our speedos constantly trying to work out, are we, you know, three Ks over the speed limit and staring down the barrel of a $196 fine and three demerit points. Um, but the roadworks, it, it's unbelievable because in some roadwork zones, you can go from 80 to 40 to 60 to 40 to 80 in the space of a kilometre in a thousand meters, that's it, right? Less than a mile for my imperial people, right? So you can go, you know, as low as 25 miles an hour, if not lower, in less than a mile, three speed changes. Right, going up to Melbourne at the moment, I went through four speed changes in the space of 15 Ks. So over 10 miles, four different speed changes. Right, 10 miles is, a, is around 16 kilometers. In the space of around 15, so, I don't know, 13 and a bit miles, or 14 and a bit miles, I went through four different speed changes, from 40 to 80, and in between, 40, 60, 80, 60, 80, 40, 60, 40, 80, 40. You know, it's just, it, it, it's inane. And, the, okay, I get weekends, they're not working, normally. The fact is, though, if they're not there, right, and there's no one working, and yes, the roadwork signs are out, what, what, why not just have it as a lower speed limit? Why keep it at 40? Why not bring it up to 60 or 80 and keep the traffic moving? Now, the government keeps sitting there saying, oh, we're, 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 we're doing this for the future, so Melbourne does keep moving. 
it's not moving at the moment, and and the, the the changes being made are only going to add to the congestion. Melbourne is going to become gridlocked because we can't move. You know, we we've got the metro tunnel that's shut so many city streets and city roads at the moment. It's bedlam. We've got roadworks between. <laughs> City Link and my side of the Westgate Freeway, all the way down to the Western Ring Road, right? The my old side of Melbourne, there's frickin' roadworks and lane closures and all sorts of stuff. You know, Saturday afternoon, getting up to Melbourne, it was like Friday afternoon at four o'clock in the afternoon, as everyone's heading home. It, you just could not move. It shouldn't take me more than, at worst, two hours to get to where I had to go in Melbourne. It, it just shouldn't. And yet it took nearly two and a half hours. You know, this is the thing. The Roads Authority and the government, if they want to get the city moving, right, I guarantee you, if you didn't do major roadworks for 12 months and gave Melburnians 6 to 12 months of just clean almost road roadwork free travel the city would move right now our, our major freeways in Melbourne are the western or the ring road right the southeastern car park or monash freeway i still call it the southeastern car park the eastern freeway east link city link the westgate freeway the hume and the calder right there are major metro highways around metro melbourne okay if you spend 12 months no road works on those roads no major road works like you know lane widening and all this type of garbage you know and and, and off-ramp on-ramp changes etc and you gave the traveling public 12 months of just really major road work free travel i guarantee you i guarantee you the city would move you know we wouldn't have the amount of traffic chaos we've got now, down here, okay, we're 150,000 people. We have Bellarine Highway, Port Arlington Road, Surf Coast Highway. There's not really that many 100k an hour zones within Metro Geelong. Most of it's 80 to 100, well, at least it's 80 to 100 this side of Geelong. South of the city towards the Great Ocean Road, it's, well, you now it's only 80. Um, going Melbourne bound, it's all 80 until you get outside the metropolitan area. The, ring, the Geelong ring roads are 100k's an hour, but that's it. That's the only 100k an hour road within metropolitan Geelong. Um, so, you know, it's not too bad, but you go to Melbourne, every, just about every major road in town has got speed limits and roadworks. Now, you could come up with a conspiracy theory that says, oh, they're doing it to slow the traffic down all the time. I don't think it's that. I think it's just that, you know, all they want to do is create as much gridlock as possible to make the public believe the roadworks they're doing are going to improve the gridlock. No. What would improve the gridlock around Melbourne's major roads is no roadworks. Because traffic would move. If you had... <coughs> The Southeastern Car Park, the Eastern Freeway, the Western Ring Road, East Link and City Link, all at the posted speed limits. Now, City Link's an 80k an hour area, but if you had them all posted at those speed limits, say the freeway side of it at 100k's an hour, my US viewers, 60 miles, or 60, 61 point five miles an hour, Traffic would move. Traffic would move. But when you've got lane closures and you've got road works, you get gridlock. If you want Melbourne to move, give them years of no nothing major. And I guarantee you the city would move. 
there'd be less time spent sitting in a car and more time getting places. The problem is at the moment they're saying, you know, they're planning for the future and, and these roadworks, once they're done, it'll be good. No, it won't. They said that about CityLink. Three months later, they're doing major roadworks. We didn't even get three months of roadworks free and they're going, oh, we need to do some more roadworks. Well, hang on. All of a sudden, we're back to square one. The Southeast car park gets jammed up. It's ridiculous. And that's the thing, you know, aside from the fact that, you know, it costs us a hell of a lot of money to go to Melbourne. <sighs> makes me wonder whether, it makes me wonder if I was moving back home, whether I'd actually be able to get anywhere on time. You know, you've got some cases to do a, like, I know my US viewers might find this hard to believe, but some people, a lot of people who live my old side of Melbourne will drive to the city. A lot will catch public transport, but those that don't will drive, you know, the 20, 25 Ks into the city. I'm not kidding. It's not unusual for Melbournians or, you know, anyone for that matter in any Australian city actually, but it's not unusual for us to drive an hour to work, half an hour to work, an hour to work. Now, some of my international viewers might find that a little hard to believe that, you know, Melbourne, Sydney people will spend half an hour, an hour driving to work. I used to. It used to take me 40 minutes at one place I was working, 40 minutes to get to work. So, you know, it's not unusual. Trust me. <laughs> um, you know, the roadworks is just, it's off the charts. And then, of course, there's nothing there on a Saturday. I mean, it's still 40 k's an hour. No one's doing anything. They've just left the roadwork signs out. That's the other thing. Why leave them out? If you're not working, bring the speed limit up so traffic can move over the weekends. I mean, I don't know about any other city in the country, but Saturdays in Melbourne, it, it's, it's just another day of the working week from a traffic point of view. I'm not kidding. So I just, you know, it's phenomenal. It really is unbelievable sometimes. Anyway, there's the middle part of the vlog done. Now, what's on the cards for the week ahead? Good question. I actually hadn't even thought about it yet. <laughs> um, well, convos, daily promos. Um, there's a couple of operating systems I want to have a sticky beak at next week as well. So stick around for that. Um, I want to have a look at a couple of uh, operating systems that have caught my eye. Tech news today, undoubtedly some breaking news. Um, Hopefully I'll pick up this other PC slash server thing that I'm in line for next week. We can have a sticky beak at that. Um, I'll have to see what else crops up really, because I honestly don't know. <laughs> I tell you, I, I woke up this morning and I'm like, because oh. I mean, we didn't get home till nearly midnight last night. So I sort of hadn't thought about it and then woke up this morning and I'm sort of got down here and I'm like, I don't even know what's on the cards for the, for the week ahead. Uh, hopefully we'll get some 80 series videos out next week as well, or in theory. I'd like to think we can get an 80 series video out because I've got plenty of stuff to do on the 80. I just can't find the time to do it. That's the problem. We'll see how things pan out anyway. There we are. Vlog done. That's it for the day here at Backyard Tech. Enjoy your Sunday. Um... I'm probably just going to either muck around on muck around with a couple of things or go and vegetate on the couch for the day or something. Mm -hmm. Stick around. I'll see what else crops up throughout the day. Other than that, I will catch you tonight for the convo. Have a lazy Sunday. Cheers. This has been another presentation from Backyard Tech.